As we rolled into North Queensland Trail Bike Adventures headquarters, we were greeted with 12 DRZs ready to ride. A quick briefing from Greg, the owner, and we're on our way. It wasn't long before we got to our first little test. A tricky, short, sharp pinch climb would be the first obstacle to claim a victim today. Keep going, keep going, keep going. First day action, we're probably, I don't know, 30 minutes into the ride. It's very slick, but a lot of rain overnight. It's testing our skills on the big DR. Here's someone else. Indicator on, having a go. Woohoo! A recent storm had knocked some trees over down the track. What do you reckon? We're doing some pruning. I think, I think we can cut those ones, or maybe the, the, the end one at least, anyway, in this one. Quick work with the saw and some teamwork getting the bikes under them and we are ready to go again. The heavy overnight rains and extra weight of the DRZs made it a real mission to get over the slippery logs. Crazy, eh? Fuck like those. Ah, oh, fuck. I'm a bit tired from that last one, I think. Momentum was key for the day. With the conditions being slippery and the bikes being heavy, you really had to get up things in one go. Can't handle. So we've probably covered 30k, maybe. Mostly single trail, bit of four-by tracks. It's a good kind of warm-up. Um, I don't think much of the ride will get technically harder than this. This probably is only this bad because of all the rain we had the last two days. After what seemed like an eternity, we finally popped out of the single trail and onto the bitumen. A quick regroup at the lookout and a fuel up at the local servo before we were on to tackle the Kreb track. To do the Kreb track, we would need to get over the Mossman River. When we got there, I think everyone was shocked with how high the water was. After searching high and low up the river, we found our spot, but the only way we were getting across was going to be carrying the bikes. Using an abandoned piece of steel we found to keep the rear wheel and the airbox out of the water, it was a three and four man job to get the bikes across. Once we reached the middle point, we could ride them from there. Because of the depth and the current of the river, it was a real mission to carry the bikes over. It took us over an hour and cost us a lot of energy. Unfortunately, three kilometers up the track, a landslide had blocked our path. We would have to get all the bikes back across the river. I've never seen 12 guys look so heartbroken. Well, there's a three and a half meter crock down there, just gone in, so, we found one of the boys to help us out. Luckily for us, we were able to flag down one of the locals and with a bit of beer money, we had a lift back across the river.
This little detour had cost us a lot of time and would mean we would have to go the other way. Crossing the Daintree River on the ferry and then a quick ride up through the Bloomfield National Park. We were quickly losing daylight. By the time we rolled into the lion's den, it was 8 o'clock. We were all tired, wet and hungry. A quick feed, a few beers and a bit of local entertainment and we were in bed early for another day. On the next episode, we continue our journey to the tip through Cooktown and Laura and the group experiences its first real crash of the tour. Oh.